Hello and welcome to lesson five of the design and technology non-examined assessment. Um, today we're going to look at the client profile and here we go. So first and foremost, quick recap of what we have covered so far. Uh, so we've picked a project, we've decided what we're going to research and then we've started some of that research with the product analysis and the market research. Okay, and there's been a few mind maps alongside that previous videos on the playlist, uh, go through each one of those and we can also send you uh, the attachments if required. Uh, they're already on show my homework for, my, for all our classes. So what we're doing this lesson, client profile. I've highlighted the bits of the mark scheme that this uh, links to. So I'm just gonna read in the uh, actual mark scheme here for nine to 10. Uh, a user or client has been clearly identified and is entirely relevant to in all aspects to the contextual challenge and the student has undertaken a comprehensive investigation of their needs and wants with clear explanation and justification of all aspects of these now this is clearly links to the market research we did last week so you can't do this page unless you've done the market research um because that will really help us out um so keep it in there we're going to identify who our client is like specific who exactly is it uh, they need to link to your uh, your context. So a, an example of a bad link would be if you decide um, your grandparent is going to be your client and your context is teenage lifestyles. It's unlikely your grandparent is a teenager. So finding, finding the correct link. So if you're designing something for nature and the environment, maybe your client is somebody that works uh, protecting nature or if you're designing something for multifunctional living, uh, you're likely to be designing for maybe an adult or a teenager that wants a multifunctional product, not designing for, I don't know, a baby. Uh, they don't really require multiple functions. Uh, so you pick, making sure you, you're talking about the client and how that links to the project. And we'll go into that in a bit more detail. So what is a client profile? Okay, we've got a little bit of why we're doing it now. Now we're looking at what it is. So it's a set of information about your client, so the person you are designing for. So it's a specific person or group of people you are going to design for. You need to include details in here, their age, and it doesn't have to be they are 35, but maybe they are aged between 30 and 40. Their gender, if you're aiming for a particular gender, what hobbies and interests that person might have, because that would maybe change how you design a product if they're really interested like me in Lincoln City, wearing a nice Lincoln City t-shirt today, uh, then uh, you might, if you're designing for me, you might design something that's maybe red and white to suit the greatest football team in the world there. Link to that fashion taste and wealth. You'd want to know how much money they've got to spend. Um, if they don't have that much money, it's unlikely they're going to want a solid oak table because that's going to be really expensive. They more, might more likely have an MDF table or desk or different materials required different prices and we've got to make sure it's linked to the context as I explained earlier okay now what I've done is I've prepared a set of questions that you need to try and answer here okay this page will probably only be about half a page um, so it's actually gonna be quite wordy quite a bit of writing but I've tried to write down all the questions that you need to try and answer in paragraphs so little task one quick one uh, get a photo of your client ideally if you're designing for a friend, get a photo of your friend, get a photo of a family member. If not, and you're just designing for teenagers in general, go online and find a photo of a group of teenagers. I've got to be really clear here though, be sensible with your photos. I had actually a sixth former, a group of sixth formers in fact, a couple of years ago, who decided that they'd get their friends to pull, pull funny, funny faces and they gave them their friends silly names and then they made a client profile around them. That was great, they handed it in. When I came to market, I just deleted that page out of their portfolio because I was unable to market and submit that to an examiner. So be sensible here. So silly photos where you're, you're putting faces probably aren't gonna cut it at this point. So paragraph one, basic information. Who are they? If they have a name, uh, age, gender, where do they live? Rough location. I don't, I'm not looking for their postcode and, and address there. Um, what hobbies and interests do they have? What sort of fashion do they like? 
And what sort of products do they own? So do they have an i? Are they like to own an iPhone or an expensive lamp or watch? Because that'll give you an idea of the sort of type of fashion and styles that of products you might want to design. So that's just the basic information. That's paragraph one. And it should take half an hour or so doing those two bits, and then you can pause and click on when you're ready. So second half hour of this uh, page or half page it's probably going to be uh, paragraph two. It's going to really explain how this person links to the context. If you go back to the Mart scheme, you'll remember that we were talking about client selected clearly links to the context. So this paragraph is going to get those marks. OK, why have you chosen this person as your client? How does it link to the context? Do they have a specific link to the product you've chosen? Uh, and then I've added a little bit about do they care about the environment or the moral impact of the product? OK, now that's quite a, a complex question there. Uh, the environment one, you probably get a little bit easier. Do they care about recycling or reusing products? But the moral impact is, is this product likely to offend anyone? OK, um, is there problems with uh, how people view this product in society? That's quite a difficult question. And that's really pushing you to sort of the higher marks in there. So I'm not asking everyone to, to really answer that question. But if you can have a go, it's definitely worth a few extra marks there. Uh, so that's going to get you some of those marks there. And then this bit is just asking an overall overarching. What do they want from the product? What functions would they like? Not what would you like? What would they like? What do you think they want? You can always ask them. That might be useful. Uh, what would you what would they like it to be made from? What would they like it to look like? Uh, why do they want the above? What, what do they want and why? OK, so you've profiled it. You've also then got a little bit of research here, and this could be in the form of an, an interview, or it could just be a, a set of another paragraph where you just explain the answers to those questions. OK, so it's a one hour task doing the previous slide and this slide. It is a bit wordy. Uh, on the next slide, I've helped you out by adding some sentence starters and connectives. So here we've got is just a, a set of sentence starters. OK, um, after speaking to my clients, they would like x okay i asked my clients and they said that y you can use those if you wish or you can come up with your own sentence structures that's completely up to you but i'm just trying trying to help you out a little bit there and there's a few connectives to join sentences together particularly for all those questions when you're writing them as a sentence as a, as a response you're going to need the connectives to give you the reasons so i keep saying the word why a lot why do they want that use the connectives to to get there okay now um, really important that if we do write in sentences. Don't write the questions out at all, okay? Because if you write the questions out, that makes it really clear that you're just following this, this process. If you're writing as a paragraph, you're likely to answer other things and and talk about different areas that you didn't maybe mean to, which would be uh, better than just answering the questions directly verbatim that I've written there. And on the next slide, I've got a couple of waggles from a previous year. Um, so on the top there in green was a, i'm going to say a basic client profile um just a couple of headings with a few bits of writing around it the one below is more of a paragraph format which i probably suggest you maybe look at this time but you can go for either way uh, the one above also shows a, a few questions and a few idea a few of a bits of information about where the client lives i think there's an elderly person uh, for the one above and the one below is actually a disabled uh, person who did archery. OK, both of them worth reading to get an idea of what's expected. That's the end of this part of this lesson. Um, I'm doing two separate videos for the two different tasks this week. Um, so design brief is also on the in lesson six, which is next. If you want to watch that video once this has been complete, but it should take half a page, should take about an hour in total. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing it in the future. Goodbye.